there are a number of AI art uh, tools that have come out in the last few months. Art Smart is the latest one. And I'm just going to take a look and see how this one compares to some of the bigger ones like Super Machine. Art Smart has three modes standard, semi realistic, and hyper realistic. Okay, so let's test out some prompts and see, see how it goes. Let's start with standard. We'll put in a prompt for a also close up of a beautiful black haired woman with freckles, fashion editorial, studio photography. It's got all the good stuff in it. And. Let's run that. We're going to run it at 512 by 512. It's not very fast at all, but let's give it a bit more time. Okay, so the processing is very slow. Okay, so this is the image that we get. This is actually pretty good. Yeah, and that is the, that is on standard mode. So what I want to do is to look at the seed. So this is the current seed that it's used. I'm going to take the seed and in the advanced, advanced options, I'm going to paste that there. So that when we run this again, it'll use the same seed for semi-realistic. It'll just be easier to compare that way. Oh, okay. That is excellent. This is, um, this reminds me of the images I get on Lexica. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a custom model. This is not a base stable diffusion. And if you have a look in the uh, negative prompts, they do have a lot in here, trying to avoid uh, deformities, um, extra limbs, those weird fingers, double heads, like all the usual stuff. It was all added into the negative prompts automatically. So that could be it, but I, Pretty sure that this is a, a custom model. Okay, so let's try it again with the hyper realistic setting that is in beta. Wow. Okay. Yep, that all is pretty damn good. Okay, that is using the same seed. It is off to a very good start. Um, here are the three images compared side by side, all using the same seed, so you can get an idea of what each of the settings does. Okay, I'm going to put it back to a random seed. Okay, now I'm going to try a landscape. Okay, so this is a alien landscape. This is on hyper-realistic. Should have started with standard, but... Okay, let's give standard a go. We will keep the same seed. I'm just going to fast forward through all these processing times because it's, it is quite lengthy. Okay, so this is a standard setting. Nothing too grand about that. It is a nice um, illustration, illustration style. And let's try semi-realistic. So semi-realistic seems to be the, um, the common, the go-to for these kinds of images. Okay, that's pretty good. So it's uh, illustration of Jupiter clouds, alien landscape and vegetation, swirling clouds, high exposure. Yeah, that all looks pretty good. I'm going to keep it on semi-realistic when I try the next prompt. Then I'll just put it on a random seed and let it do its thing. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so the prompt was Portrait of a beautiful cyberpunk cyborg female wearing a ballistic face mask with brilliant gold hair. Mm. It's got black hair with a uh, um, reddish tint to it. Um, intricate abstracts, intricate artwork, octane render, trending on art station, the usual stuff. It is a really good photo, a really good picture. Um, of course, she doesn't have cold flowing here, but with AI art, you're not always going to get exactly what you want. But this is not something that the average person could just draw up on their own. And I could just keep uh, regenerating until I find something closer to what I'd like, but this came out pretty good. Okay, let's try out another prompt. Again, I'm just going to fast forward through these waiting times. So this is what we get. 
detailed portrait of a neon operator girl, cyberpunk, futuristic neon, reflective puffy coat, Japanese ornaments. Yeah, I quite like this. It's actually a very interesting image. I'm going to try out one more prompt. And this should be of a porcelain dragon. And that is excellent. This is just what I was thinking of. Um, I took this prompt from Lexica. It was one of the um, uh, prompts that someone ran through Lexica Aperture that I really liked. I wanted to see if I could run it through AltSmarts as well. So, yeah, I do believe this is a custom, a custom model that they're running. Okay, so one of the other features of AltSmarts is their in-painting. So I'll give that a try. I've tested it out before and it seemed to be good at making, um, at removing items like removing mountains from scenery, removing earrings, things like that. But replacing things like adding an eagle to the clouds, um, those kinds of things, it, it failed on my last test. But I'm going to give it a try now and see what, what happens. I'm going to start small. Let's try to change the eye color here. So it's got these red eyes. And I'm just going to say, um, okay, let's just try blue eyes and see if it understands what I'm trying to say. If not, then I will, I'll say dragon with blue eyes. I'm not actually sure what, um, what kind of text it requires to understand what I once changed. Okay, so it did add, so it did try to add blue eyes, but yeah, it doesn't look very good at all. Okay, so we can undo. Okay, so undo. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're back here. Let's try a uh, dragon. Or blue eyes. Okay, that looks better. Let's zoom in a bit. That actually looks way better. It's not... Um, it looks like greenish eyes, but there is a blue tint around it that matches the rest of the image. Quite like that. That that works for me. I mean, it's not exactly what I was going for, but it does look like dragon's eyes. In painting in stable diffusion isn't as good as with Dali, so my expectations aren't very high, but at least it looks realistic. Okay, let's try something else. Um, There's a dragon with a crown on its head. I think that is pretty complicated. So I don't expect it to work out. But let's let's give it a go. Okay. Right, so it's not a crown exactly. But it's like a gold adornment on its head. That's much better than I expected. When I had tested this out about an hour ago, I could only remove items. I could remove things from from images. Though it was a image of scenery. Perhaps it's just scenery that it has a problem with. Oh, we will test that out now. Uh, now... We want a dragon with a green necklace around its neck. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't able to do that. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit of green around the neck area. It couldn't really figure out how to add a necklace on, or perhaps it didn't know which part the neck was, I, I don't know, but yeah, in painting has not been going well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the landscape. 
and want to test out the landscape and see if I'm able to uh, in-paint something into a background. Okay, so we've got a really nice image here of uh, an alien landscape. So now, if I wanted to add a... Let's say I want to add a tree here. Okay, I'm going to try first just writing tree and seeing if it gets that. If not, I'll add more to the instructions. Okay, so it has added a little tree there. We'll just go there. Don't hit reset, that means reset the whole image. Let's generate it again. So it did add the tree. It added a small tree, but it did understand what I was saying. So it doesn't seem like you have to uh, rewrite like alien landscape with a tree. Perhaps I just need to mention the size of the tree for it to be able to draw it. Oh, that's very nice. Okay, so we've got a really nice um, alien landscape again. I am going to try to add to add a eagle flying eagle flying flying eagle okay so it has put an eagle's beak sticking out there and nothing else of it so it sort of does you know oh actually it has turned this lawn into the head of the eagle, and this is the beak. I presume that that's what it's doing. Let me try something. Sorry. Let's say... Uh, uh, a dog sitting under a tree. So if it is looking at the whole image, it'll see where the, the tree is, close to the, the water, if that is water. And I want a dog to be placed underneath it. Okay, we have no dog. So yes, in in my test earlier, trying to add in uh, eagles and dogs and whatnot doesn't seem to. Well, it hasn't worked in my test. Though, if you're trying to change things like eye color, remove things from an image, then it does work. It's not always perfect, but it it can work. Okay, so I'm going to reset that, and I'm going to try the image to image. Okay, so in this image we've got a man and a woman dressed in winter clothes, um, embracing. So I'm going to try a man and a woman in summer clothing, embracing. Okay, so this is what we get. If you look at the tool, it's uh, it's kept the style. It's got that um, the same kind of art style. It has a man and woman. They are in summer clothing. They are embracing. They're not. Um, it's not the same pose, but it has taken a lot of inspiration from this photo. I'll try it again. Okay, now it's gone for a much more realistic look. Um, though the faces are all messed up, their noses are conjoined. The first one was much better, but I also have it set as semi-realistic. So I'm going to put it as standard. Let's see if we can keep that cartoon look. Okay, so now it's gone with a very, very cartoon look. Um, it does have a man and a woman. Um, she is in summer clothing. He is in, I guess, winter clothing with two different colored shoes. But it is sticking quite close to the um, uh, the image that I've provided. So with any uh, image to image uh, generation, um, it is going to depend on your prompts and on your uh, seed. It's a random seed, so you would have to keep regenerating until you find something that you like. 
Um, I could just pull out, we just remove this text. Let's see if I can just remove that. Just need to remove this blue as well. I'll just need that blank. Okay, so it did not remove it all completely. Um, but if I perhaps try to say something, white background. Okay, so needing a blank doesn't really work, but typing white background does. Okay, so if you want to remove something, you just need to tell it exactly what you want to do. And you can remove text from your images. Okay, I want to try to face again because it does have a, um, a feature I want to test those. Okay, so in this one, this is a using the standard mode. So the face is not great. And there is a face enhance feature. So the neural network helps to create AI generated face, facial distortion. Let's give it a try. The main problem with this is, well, all the eyes. Everything else is possible. Okay, the ears are a bit messed up as well. But um, the eyes are more noticeable. I'm not sure how much has changed, to be honest. It eyes still look a bit messed up to me. I'm going to try regenerate for another image. Right, so we've got upscaling and we've got facing ons. I'm going to save this image and then I'm going to use the face enhance. Again, it's mainly the eyes that are messed up. If the face enhance can fix that, then the image is usable. It's still showing this, but it should be done. Okay, so looking at the images side by side, there's not much of a difference. The eyes are still messed up. The, um, the facial distortion is still there. The neural network hasn't really done much at all. So that is not good. Um, so the main features of ArtSmart are the image generation, the um, in-painting, face enhance, upscale. And then it has something called My Tunes. And My Tunes is basically a way to um, use Dreamboot to add images of yourself into it. You'll pay uh, $7. And then you'll be able to have yourself in in images. So instead of running Dream Boot on your own PC using your resources or um, for one of the other services that you can find online, um, you can do it for $7. I'm not going to run Dream Boot because I'm not really interested in having, having photos of myself, but it is something that you can play around with. Um, I'm just going to go back to the the playground and the last thing I want to try is the upscaling feature so I'm gonna leave actually I'm going to put one of my old prompts and I'm gonna put it as hyper realistic okay so the image is really good and what I'm gonna do is just try to upscale it and then you can say if you want it two or three times its size I'm gonna say I want it twice no let's do three times its size why not for two credits. You see in this image the eyes are perfect. Okay, and this is the upscale version of our image. And the eyes, the, there's no problem with the eyes in this image. It's, I mean, it just, uh, it just depends. It depends on, on the seed you're getting. And I think the mode has also made a difference here, jumping to the hyper-realistic mode. Okay, so that's basically art smart. Um, you do get really good images. It's, it's a bit hit or miss. Some images are better than others. Um, you could find a good seed and keep generating good images. Uh, if you have good prompts, you can definitely make some good stuff with it. Um, image to image does work. The in painting isn't as great. Um, I, I was surprised that I was able to change the eyes of the dragon. 
Um, it was the first, uh, the first time that it's actually worked for me. But yeah, in, in painting also hit or miss, face enhance does not work at all for me. It hasn't worked in my tests before or now. Upscaling looks all right. Standard upscaling, the upscaling is okay. Um, so with the images themselves, in the advanced options, you can adjust the the width up to 1024 for the width and 1024 pixels for the height. You do have a guidance scale saying how close you want your image to be to your prompt. You can choose the number of inference steps, the prompt strength, and you can add in additional uh, negative prompts there if you like. So Oddsmart is Price quite low on uh, AppSumo at the moment. So if you're looking for a simple art generation tool, then then you should give it a try. If you're mainly looking for um, an in-painting tool or facial enhancements, then this will not work for you. Okay, there we have it. That's uh, a quick demo of ArtSmart. Uh, they're currently running a lifetime deal on AppSumo if you're interested in giving it a try. Thanks for watching.